The tower? What? So, there You're is... On a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Um... She's going to kill me again. Again? People don't die twice. You haven't even met the princess, and I hardly think she'd be capable of killing someone as skilled and courageous as yourself. I don't even know what to make of that. What? If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. You know I can hear you, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. So the narrator gets amnesia. It feels as if... Let's just go on with the theory that the princess, or her royalty-ness, also has a narrator. Where the princess seems to either change or have an amnesia between these attempts. But in this case, the narrator has amnesia, but not us. So something has happened. What does it matter what he knows? There's nothing we can do to stop her. Voice of the Broken. She's just going to kill us again. So we get a voice from our former attempt. She is not going to kill you unless you let her. But slaying the princess and saving the world is going to be much more difficult than it has to be if you spend the whole time second-guessing yourself. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have amnesia. He, <laughs> he just... Like, like the last time, this time he... Um... Complains about what we did, basically. Because the second-guessing is apparently what killed us. Okay, so proceed to the cabin. We gotta come oh, quietly. Before you go any further, she will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Oh, so why did it say the tower? Is that like a tarot card sort of thing? Because I'm very bad with tarot cards, but I know there's a tarot card called the tower. We might as well just pledge ourselves to her and stop pretending we're capable of doing anything in this situation. She probably doesn't even need to try to overpower us. <laughs> is the voice of the broken just the narrator mocking us, or is it truly the last character that went up there? Maybe it's just the narrator dissuading us from doing this again. Mocking us. As with the voice of the smitten. Can we tone down the pessimism just a smidge? I'm not being a pessimist. I'm just being realistic. You're being annoying. <laughs> just ignore their bickering and whatever you do, don't pledge yourself to her. I cannot stress enough how absolutely catastrophic that would be for everyone, yourself included. I agree. If she's wrongfully imprisoned, then we should rescue her, but if he's telling the truth, we shouldn't just hand her the world on a silver platter. Rescue her? Given the stakes of the situation, there isn't really a difference between rescuing her and pledging yourself to her. Either would be terrible. So please, try to ignore both of those knuckleheads and focus on saving the world. Let's not make this harder than it has to be. Okay, I'm gonna try to be a bit focused. Want. I guess I don't have a say here. Oh, come on, the broken voice. Don't be like that. The interior what the, the hell? is larger and more grandiose than its humble exterior would suggest. The only furniture of note is a massive marble altar with a pristine blade perched on its edge. And you can see this looks... It looks that, like we're already on the top of the tower as well, judging by... Uh, what am I even saying? The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Why do we feel so small? Because the place is small. Oh, <laughs> is it because we were overpowered and we feel insignificant? We don't feel small. We are small. You didn't say anything about the mirror on the wall. The mirror does look like some sort of ornate mirror. Some sort of um, scrying. There isn't a mirror. 
There's the altar, the blade sitting on the altar, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. No, there definitely is a mirror. There's definitely a mirror. Yeah, yeah. There isn't. Who cares if there's a mirror? We're all going to die anyway. And I'm sure that if we looked in there, we'd just see something sad and miserable looking back at us. We don't need any reminders of what we are. It would only make things worse. Voice of the broken go away, even the voice of Smitten. <laughs> was bad for the last time, you're not going to die unless you let it happen. And luckily for you, there isn't a mirror. So no one needs to worry about confronting a grisly visage any time in the near future. You know, I wasn't going to check the mirror, but I'm going to check the mirror. Worth, if there were a mirror, I'm sure that you wouldn't find anything sad or miserable in it looking back at you. You probably look perfectly normal. Probably. Do you not know what we look like? <laughs> he knows. He just doesn't have the heart to tell us. I want to see how handsome I am. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. You call this a hand? Don't you know how ridiculous you look right now. We should count ourselves lucky. Some things are better left unseen. Again, I'm going to enter the basement without a blade. No blade this time. Yeah. Maybe she'll be more receptive if we're unarmed. That was my theory the first time blade. as well. No blade. It doesn't matter. The door to the basement <laughs> creaks open, revealing a spiral staircase. It steps almost as deep as you are tall. The smell of incense drifts up from below. For a moment, you almost feel at ease. Well, uh, does, uh, it, it feels tensing up, especially considering everything has changed here. Oh, this is actually kind of nice. It's still a stone basement. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. <laughs> Stop with the advertisement of doing booming your bidding. voice rolls up the stairs. Booming voice. Is that a guest I hear? Don't linger on the stairs. Come down and witness me. Oh my goodness, that sounds like a demon. It truly sounds like you a demon. You were kidding when you said it was booming. She wasn't like this last time. You shouldn't have come down here unarmed. We need to get down there. <laughs> she wants us to see her. We need to see her. With a voice like that, a dagger wouldn't have helped. <laughs> Should we be worried about your sudden change in attitude? Just a few minutes ago, you were going on about how pointless everything was. Now you want to go down there. It doesn't matter what that little voice says. He's not the one making the decisions. Though if his ramblings get you to the princess, they get you to the princess. <laughs> Continue down the stairs. Making your way down the spiral staircase is a time-consuming and exhausting effort, every step requiring you to clamber over one edge before dropping to the next. But soon the end comes into view, and you tumble to the bottom, entering the vast, temple-like room beyond. Well, to be fair, it looks a little bit more like a dungeon this time, like a high-security dungeon. The princess comes oh. over you, almost glowing in the weak starlight, her figure framed by a stained-glass window. Her long hair billows around her, and a chain binds her wrist to the far wall. This is not the princess. This is a statue of liberty in flesh form. The chain is nothing to her. It might as well be a toy for all the good it would do. I told you it was pointless to resist her. Why is she floating? The little bird has returned to me. I wonder what he wants. Ah, she remembers me. I see your hands are empty. You've already given up, haven't you? You aren't even going to try and kill me. How sweet. And more than a little disappointing. She sounds more similar to the last voice. She's disappointed in us? Neil. No. 
but the words don't leave your mouth. Instead, your legs buckle and your knees hit the floor. <laughs> That's my good little bird. Now, why don't we talk? The first one that actually wants to talk. The last time we met, you told me I was destined to end the world. That thought wrapped itself around my heart. It has pulled at me since the moment I squeezed the life out of your broken lungs. So that's what a narrator said. Don't tell her that. Why would you tell her that? And I'm like, I assume she knew as much. But alas, look what it did. I could feel its fundamental truth awaken me. The collapse of the old is a necessary prelude to the birth of the new. And the world as it is now is overdue for... Alterations. See, she's not going to destroy the world. She's just going to make a few changes. A few quality of life changes, I'm sure. It's time for me to seize my destiny. And you, little bird, will help me seize it. Yeah, but you're probably going to kill me right after I help you anyway. Why can't you break out of this? Well, that gives away the game, doesn't it? It certainly does. And beyond that, it more than lends credence to our conversation in the woods. I don't love the thought that in some other reality you failed to destroy her, but what's done is done. I can only hope it helped you learn a valuable lesson. You are the only one who can deal with her. And if you don't... Well, she's let you know what will happen, hasn't she? Then you shouldn't have trusted us with her destruction. She is inevitable. Can't you feel it? He's being melodramatic, but he's not exactly wrong, is he? What are we supposed to do to stop her? <sighs> okay, first things first, you're going to have to stuff those pessimistic thoughts someplace far, far away and commit yourself to what needs to be done. The stakes of the situation should be perfectly clear to everyone now. If you're going to save the world, you have to have faith that you can pull this off. You can't win a battle that you've already lost in your mind. That's true. What would you have me do? What have you planned? Just because you're supposed to end the world doesn't mean you actually have to do it. You can be whatever you want. Is this going to have consequences for the next princess? But first, I want to say, I have questions for you. Know the limits of your privilege, little bird. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. But still. You're still there is captured. an empty place at my side for you to fill, if you'll have it. But it is not a place for an equal. It is a place for something worthy to be kept. A priest, perhaps. Or a pet. Yeah, you can have the voice that is broken <laughs> as your pet. The rest of us will be against you. Well, I see that the text is white with a red outline now, but sometimes it's fully red blood red as if you're ready to kill us all. Uh, what would you have me do? What do you have planned? And all you have to do is break these chains and set me free. <laughs> if you're so powerful, can't you just break the chains yourself? Don't be rude. Of course she can. <laughs> of course she can. It's not rude to question someone who's apparently trying to end the world. <laughs> that's that's true. That's exactly why it's rude. We should know our place. I can, easily. But that isn't what I want to do. The story of a terrible and bountiful god unbounded of her own will is no story at all. It's not worthy of everything I am or everything I'm bound to become. It isn't even worthy of what I was. She admitted it. She won't free herself. We can just store her down there. It's okay. We can just leave. <laughs> the destruction in Genesis that's to follow in my wake is deserving of a song that can echo for eternity. The song of you being so struck by my glory so overwhelmed by what I am that you feel you must deliver me into the world. And from your act of utter devotion and submission springs a new dawn, a better dawn. 
Submit now. Submit later. It makes no difference. Because in the end, no matter how vainly you struggle against me, my will triumphs over yours. Even if I brought a dagger, either she's a spirit or something and I can't stab her, or she will dodge it anyway. If the firmer one can dodge it, then she for sure will. Just because you're supposed to end the world doesn't mean you have to. This isn't about desire. This is about what I am. And I have little interest in discussing destiny with one that cannot see the divine truth that shines in my heart. So I have to do this. I'm yours to command. Why can't we just turn around and go out? Your will was so easily broken. Am I that magnificent? All you need to do now is break my chains. If this is what you want, then I guess there's not much else for me to say. No, you can't just give in to her. Not when the stakes are so high. Not when you're so close. I won't let you do this. Yeah, but I'm not gonna be able to defeat her anyway. There's still something in the way. A greasy film inside of you where it doesn't belong. Trying to conceal you from me. So you noticed, huh? Is that a person? No, it used to be a person. It's something different now. An echo. Is... is she talking about you? About a narrator. It's impossible. She's not supposed to be able to interact with me. She... You're a small one, aren't you? <laughs> a shriveling little worm stretched beyond its limits, trying to control things that it can't understand. No, no, no. What are you talking about? I'm just... I don't care what you are. You're mine. Oh, there. Oh, there. Rise, my little bird. Without, Without hesitation, hesitation you're, you're brought, brought to your, your feet. feet. Break my chains. And how are we supposed to do that? We don't even have a weapon. All, All you need to do is believe it's been done. done. Once again, the narrator and the princess seems to be what? And what if I don't believe? What happens then? You, you poor, poor, wretched little thing. thing. You, you already do believe. believe. You've you always, always believed. believed. All you All have, you to, have do to do is, is open, open the last door, door to your heart. heart. It's easy. And once you let her in, you'll be safe and free forever. Please, don't do this. Well, we can't break her chains, an chains anyway. Her oh! Chains shatter, and the cuff falls from her wrist. She is loose, and the end is upon us. I guess us touching the chain was just symbolic because she didn't want to free herself. There was no way for us to break those chains. What a good disciple you are. Come, it's time for us to leave. Okay, you're not gonna kill me. What happens now? Nothing. And then everything. In other in other words, we start over. <laughs> oh, all those hands. Oh. Yeah, she's being brought back, just like I am being brought back. But you do not shake her you do not take her hand. Something has taken her away and has left something else in her place. She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? Because that mirror might be significant. The narrator, who seems to control a lot of things in this universe, did not even see the mirror. I suspect this mirror was out in the forest when I turned away, even. And it caused for us. I don't know where she went and I don't know how would even go looking for her? The, the narrator is gone. Who is? Does that mean the world ended? Possibly, and that we see through the weaves of space and story. 
Figures the world would end and leave us with all this nothing. Oh, come on, voice of broken. I don't know where she went, and I don't know how we'd go looking for her. Right. She's gone. It's just us and that awful thing. I feel anxious. Does anyone else feel anxious? Well, I felt anxious the first time as well when we went into the forest. I think I'm supposed to look in the mirror. There's something dreadful about it. I, I don't think you should. It's the only thing that's here. We need to pray up. I don't want to look at us. <laughs> Not it. Not us. I'm begging you, don't do this. I'm doing this. The mirror never scared you before. It's different now. It feels... I don't know. Final. Oh. Oh yeah, and the narrator also did say that there are not that many worlds left. Oh. You approach the mirror in a white font similar to the blood red font earlier when the princess talked. So maybe the princess is in here. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They are gone, but the mirror remains. It's time for you to see what's in it. Do we not see our hand at all? It's you. You are alone in a place that is empty. It is quiet here. The mirror went away. You are... Uh, yeah, proceed... Oh. The story is still go to the cabin and I see some... Feathers here? Okay. Oh, yeah. There she is. You're at the cabin and she's still standing in the basement. Approach. You recognize the presence inhabiting the shell. It is the entity that dwells in the spaces between. Something returns to the long quiet. It has surrendered its path of annihilation and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. Well, that sounds a bit more welcoming. You're that thing I met in the space outside of the woods, aren't you? I thought that was a dream. Vague recollections. Empty tunnels without a mouth. I am sorry if I frightened you. Oh, that's sweet. So is the voice sort of coming from... Like, why are there so many hands covering her? What are you? I am solitary lights in an empty city. What are you? So she's, maybe she is some sort of god. And she's partially innocent, like the first princess we met. She doesn't even know what we are. What do you think I am? I don't know what I am. Or actually, I'm gonna say I'm a person. A person. A set of eyes witnessing from one perspective. I think that you are more like me than you are like a person. Well, it makes sense, since I am special, as the narrator would put it. And what's with our hand? We are oceans, reduced to shallow creeks. Is this the end of the world? How can the world have ended if we are talking? Because we might not be living. That's why we surpass death and everything. What is the gifts of a fragile vessel? Yes. Nerves and fibers to feel the worlds beyond. Perspectives to make my own. This one is dominance. A figure capable of bending everything to her will. She will make for a terrifying and divine heart. Uh -huh. Do not mourn her, for she would not be able to mourn you. She doesn't sound like anyone who would mourn anyone. Keep because it's pets or what it was. Do you know the narrator? You are the only thing I have ever known. 
Well, she, who you're capturing right now, who doesn't warn me, could see the narrator. The space we're in is vacant. Nothing comes here but us. Are you what sent me to slay the princess? Are you what trapped me here? I don't think so. I think that's the narrator still. I have only just now stirred to consciousness. I could not have trapped you here, and I too yearn to be free. Yeah, so she is also a princess. She's the next in line, sort of. She's also some sort of princess. Um, and we can even attack... Um, yeah, exactly. Are you the princess? Exactly. She is part of me. And part of me is her. But were you always the princess, or are you just making her a part of yourself? You speak in circles. I do, I suppose, Does it yes. it matter where one thing begins and another ends? It's quite a bit philosophical. I know only that they are. Okay, so she only knows that the worlds exist. Uh, what happens now? Nothing, as we are. But I know that there are worlds beyond us, and that we are meant to reach them. There is no exit, but this vessel is a creature of perception. She can make you forget. If only you believe her to be able to. Bring me more perspectives, so that I may be whole. And perhaps then we will know our freedom. Does that mean encountering as many princesses as possible? Or killing as many princesses as possible? Or break them out? Aren't you scared that I'll find a way to kill you? How much will I forget? Everything. Until we meet again. How many more pieces do, do you, uh, of you do I have to find? More than you have found, but less than there are to find. I am infinite. The rest will find their own way home. I was sent to say the princess to stop her from destroying the world. If I help you, is that what you're going to do? You ask of things that cannot be done. To destroy is merely to reshape, to remold. What are you going to do if I help you? How can I know? I am flickers and something sprawling and unilluminated. Such chaotic. And what if I don't let you do this to me? Then we will be here forever, as we are now. Unfinished. Dry. Hollow. Like in the basement. Um... Okay, make me forget. She asks that I tell you to remember her. The princess. You won't. Yeah, but, okay. Everything goes dark and you die. Damn. Damn. <laughs> You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. Okay, I'm going to take a break for this for now. Uh, can I just save? Let's see, save... Yeah, there we go. I'm just going to save this and return to this soon because this was super interesting. And thank you so much to Amixus for recommending this game to me. And uh, I still don't know what's going on or if I should kill her or save her. <laughs> but still, going to play more of this soon. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic night.